I'm Tony, and today we are going to make a really cute tote. Uh, the tote that I'm going to be making is going to be using the literary panel, isn't this super cute, from Camelot Fabrics using their free pattern that they have put out there. Um, you can find the pattern at uh, Camelot Fabrics, uh, or if the fabric has is out of print and the free pattern is no longer available, or let's just say you can't find any of this fabric, have no fear. I am gonna go step by step through everything, uh, including all of the measurements, link everything down below for all of the math and measurements, and then that way you can make your very own tote using the panel or fabric of your own. What materials do we need? So in the instructions, they of course spell it out, sewing machine, iron and pressing service, uh, needle and coordinating thread. That is, of course is for your uh, sewing machine. Uh, or you can possibly do this by hand. Uh, it says straight pins. I'm not gonna use any straight pins. We're just gonna, you know, go as it is. Uh, measuring tape, straight edge. Don't need measuring tape, but you do need a straight edge and rotary cutter uh, for cutting everything. Uh, fabric shears, fabric marker. Eh, we don't need a fabric marker that I that I've that I have found. Uh, but we do need your favorite tube turning method. Um, whether that is a safety pin, a tube turner. This is my favorite tube turner, the Easy Point and Turner, um, because we do are going to have tubes for the handles. So keep that in mind. For fabric, we need, uh, of course, the panel. Now, if you do not have a panel, you do need a single sheet. Now, this is going to be the front and the back, all in one big fabric sheet. So if you're using your own tote, your own fabric, um, it is important that you have the same fabric for the outside, for the front and the back. Uh, this is a half yard for the outside. A, and then you need a half yard for the inside. Um, you do need additional fabric. I am actually using this adorable fabric that is a coordinating fabric from the literary line from Camelot. So that is important. Um, you can only, so you want the bottom to be strengthened. So this has to be one continuous. For the optional pockets, you need a quarter yard of fabric. Uh, you can use a fat quarter. For the, um, uh, for the straps, uh, you need a quarter yard of fabric. You can use a fat quarter. Um, now, I've looked at it. You can use the optional pockets and the uh, straps with the same fabric. So if you decide that you want to use the same fabric for these, if you have your own fabric, um, just a fat quarter or a quarter yard of fabric is fine. It should be enough. Okay, so first step you want to do is get everything cut and prepared. Uh, so I'm going to cut all of my pieces out and then I will go through the sizes of each piece. Again, all the measurements are going to be down below. I almost forgot the most important material, fusible interfacing. Uh, the fusible interfacing is what's gonna give the tote some extra weight, uh, some extra body, and to make sure that you can hold things. So with the fusible interfacing, what I like to use, what I recommend is the medium weight heat and bond fusible interfacing. Uh, it is a nice, just, it's, it's a really nice um, weave. It's a great interfacing. Um, if you want to use a different type of interfacing, I've linked a video down below from Fierce Kittens who talks about interfacing for bags um, and the different types of interfacings. But for a simple tote like this, I like to use the medium weight interfacing uh, from Heat and Bond. First up is the measurement of the body. Uh, the measurement of the body in the, inst in the instructions is 16 inches by 32 inches. Well, I have adjusted that. We went at 16 inches by 35 inches. Um, if you're using the panel, then you wanna make sure to cut this panel down to 16 inches wide. So you will need to square this up and trim this down to 16 inches wide. 
Um, what I like to do is take a ruler and measure the 16 inches um, and then kind of center this and then trim it down. Uh, the length, you want to trim this down to 35 inches. Now, with, if you're using the panel, this is important. So if you have a large cutting mat, this makes it so much easier. Uh, if you don't, what you want to do is have each side here be 17 and a half inches wide. So that means take your, uh, your panel and you want to measure out 17 and a half inches from the center area right here, which is going to trim it up a bit. And that's fine because by doing that, you're actually squaring everything up. So you need two pieces of fabric that are, again, 16 inches by 35 inches. One for the outside, if you have the panel, trim it down. One for the inside. After cutting both of the body pieces, cut the two handle pieces. Now, the measurements in the pattern are correct on this, uh, and they are 24 inches by 4 inches. Uh, now, if of course, if, one of the reasons why it said the 32, and you may have noticed this when cutting the pieces, if you have a panel, uh, it's a little wonky, it's a little crooked, so you have to actually center it and cut it down. This is going to happen on any pre-printed panel. There's no way to get a perfect measurement whenever printing it out on the machines. So the great thing about this Camelot fabric panel is they've given you plenty of room in order to center this up and then cut it down. Don't just use your scissors and cut along those dotted lines. You want to make sure that you center things up and do it. And you definitely can do it for these two handle pieces. So for these handle pieces, again, uh, 24 inches by 4 inches long for each of them. And make sure that black dotted line is cut out of there. So you don't want to, you want to make sure that that black dotted line does not show on either one. If you're using your own fabrics, well that's easy. Just cut two 24 inch by 4 inch pieces. Once these are all cut out, now we move on to the fusible interfacing. So these are the only pieces that need interfaced. If you're doing pockets that are optional, you do not need to interface them. So go ahead at this point now, after cutting out the handle pieces, cut out the, uh, the interfacing. You need about a yard and a half of interfacing. I, I didn't mention that before, but the measurements are down below. Uh, you want to take this interfacing now and go ahead and cut out two of the body pieces, which are the uh, 16 inches by 35 inches, and then cut out two of the handle pieces, which are the 24 inches by 4 inches. So you're cutting four pieces of interfacing now. So now you should have your two body pieces, your two handles, and four pieces of interfacing cut out. Uh, if you bought this interfacing, uh, it is 20 inches wide, so you've noticed that's a perfect size. 16 inches wide for the panel, and then 4 inches wide for the handles. Uh, now, you still have not done anything with the pockets, so I, that's coming up next after we finish this next step, which is fusing the interfacing to the fabric. So I'm going to show you how to fuse the interfacing uh, for one of the handles. So let me go ahead and grab the handle and the interfacing piece. Now, whenever you're interfacing, you always want to, and you want to iron the glue side of the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric. Now remember, this is the right side of fabric that has the color on it. This is the wrong side of fabric that doesn't have the color on it. The right side of the interfacing, if you feel it with your fingers, you feel it's like little pieces of glue on here. There's little bumps. That's the glue that's going to hold this together. So make sure when you're ironing this, you iron the glue side down onto the handle piece. 
And when you're ironing it, um, make sure that you read the manufacturer's suggestion if you, if you should have steam or not. Uh, if you're using the heat and bond medium weight interfacing, steam is okay. But there are some brands and companies that do not want you to use steam because the steam will actually take the glue away. So you wanna make sure that you know if you have steam or not for your interfacing, depending upon the interfacing that it is. All right, so let's move this down. There we are. Now, make sure after you finish fusing it together, ironing it together, look at it and look along those edges. Make sure there's no pops, there's nothing that's coming away, and it looks like mine is good. So now we're going to do all of the panels. The, we're gonna make sure that we iron all of the interfacings to all of the corresponding pieces of fabric for the two bodies and two handles. So go ahead and do that now, and then we get to move on to pockets. Those pieces that you just fused, go ahead and take those and set those aside for right now. We'll bring those back in a moment. Uh, now, this next section is optional. Uh, so if you are not putting pockets on the inside of your tote, go ahead and skip this part. Look at the time codes down below over to where we actually start assembling our body together. Okay? Now, if you are doing pockets, well, great, you're in the right place. Let's keep going. Uh, now, for our instructions that, uh, that Camelot did, they have a single pocket that you actually have sew down the center uh, in order to add it on. Uh, this pocket method is the easy, easy, easy way of doing pockets. Uh, there are definitely a lot more complicated ways of doing pockets that hide a lot of the seams. This is not one of those. This is the easy method. But you know what? This is the method that I like because it's easy. If you bought the literary panel, you'll notice that there are two larger rectangles here and then a smaller rectangle. This smaller rectangle is just filler. Uh, you don't need this for anything in your project. Uh, you can turn this into a super small po pocket on the other side uh, or just use this for something else. Uh, but all we're gonna need for the pocket is these two right here. If you would like to add another pocket on the other side, you totally can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my fabric from here uh, because I'm using the literary panel for this. Uh, so for this demonstration, we need two 12 inch by eight inch rectangles for one pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna cut two 12 inch by eight inch rectangles. All right, so we have our rectangles, our 12 inch by eight inch. Uh, if you are using the panel from Camelot Fabrics, you may notice that um, you may not be able to get a perfect square without a little bit of something else in there. That is okay, that's perfectly natural, that's perfectly fine. And honestly, that's gonna be in the seam allowance and if this is gonna be on the inside pocket, don't worry about it, it's fine. So the next step, what we wanna do is you wanna take this and go right side to right side. And once we put these together, we want to sew around. So we wanna actually sew about right here and so all the way around um, with a quarter inch or half inch, it honestly doesn't make a difference which one you do for the pocket, um, quarter inch or half inch seam all the way around and stop right here. And you're going to secure your stitches before and after uh, on both sides because we're gonna take this and flip this inside out in order to make sure that we have a nice seam on that. So I'm gonna do that and come back and show you the next step. So our pocket is now sewn all the way around. Now here's what I mean about securing in your stitches. So putting a few stitches at the very beginning and at the very end, what you wanna do is just go back and forth with your machine and needle and that locks in these stitches, that secures them in. So whenever you put your hand in here and flip this inside out, you're not worried about opening those stitches so they're not popping open, so they're secured in there. All right, so at this point, go ahead and flip your pockets inside out 
and push out the corners. If you have problems pushing those corners out all the way and need just a little bit of help, they do have poker corners where you can actually take these and put them in and it really just kind of helps poke it out all the way. Now, if you do a, um, if you use one of these poker corners, make sure you don't add too much strain to it because you don't want to poke through the corner. You just want to poke that corner out. All right, so let me finish doing this. Now, after you finish poking these corners out, then we iron this. Uh, what you want to do whenever you're ironing it is you want to take this fabric right here that's open and you want to tuck this in and just kind of lay it down just like that. So let's go ahead and iron. So let's bring this over and bring my iron over and iron it. And then our pocket is finished and ready to be added on to the inside part of our bag. Now when adding your pocket, let's first take a look at how our bag is going to be put together. So this is going to be the outside of the bag and this is going to be the inside of the bag. So as you're looking at it, it is going to look like this. So we're going to sew both of these together just like this. And then these are going to be folded just like that. So when you're adding a pocket in, you don't want to add it to this outside piece of fabric. You want to add it to this inside piece of fabric. So we're going to take this outside fabric and just set it aside for now. Now, whenever we're doing our pocket, the first thing you want to do is put a crease, figure out where the fold line is. So where the general bottom is going to be, because whenever you're putting your pocket in, you don't want to put that anywhere near this crease. Because let's say if we put our pocket in right here, well, that's a problem right in the middle because our crease is there. The pocket is not really going to serve as a pocket. So let's assume this is our bottom and this is our top of our bag. So I'm going to put this kind of almost in the middle right there. Now, the nice thing about this fabric is I can see one, two, three bookcases, one, two, three bookcases on either side, and I can kind of center it. And then I'm going to center this up. Now, whenever we're doing this, uh, remember, this top part is going to be the opening part that you put in here. Um, the bottom part here and here and here are all going to be sewn. So our open area needs to be on the bottom. All right, so make sure you have that. Now, I said earlier that you don't need pins or clips or anything else. Um, at this point, if you have pins and you want to pin this in place, by all means, you can pin this in place. Um, you don't need to, though. As long as you have a general idea and, and you know it's going to stay, it's not going to go wonky, you can leave this. But just to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and do this. And I probably should say now that there's another area that I was wrong, that yes, you do need pins, a, not pins, that you do need a uh, pencil or a fabric marker or other things. I, this is how I tend to sew. I tend to go, oh yeah, you don't need this thing. And then I get into it and I'm like, oh wait, yeah, I kind of need this thing. So I will make sure that the materials that's down below in this video does correctly show the materials that you probably need in order to do this. Let me turn this because I'm going to be sewing it this way. So I want to make sure my pins are facing the direction that I am sewing. Let's make sure that that, nope, that is not an opening. Fantastic. Great. All right, so now at this point, what you want to do is you want to sew, and I'm going to use black thread so you can see, um, you want to sew two sets of lines. You want to sew a, for starting right here and making sure you secure this area. Go back and forth with your sewing and go down and around. And you want to sew at a quarter inch, so about a quarter inch from the edge right there. So down and around that quarter inch and then secure it again right here. Go back and forth. 
Then after you do a quarter inch, go back and do another one an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way down and around, making sure you secure here and secure here. Leave this entire area right here open. Now remember, I said this is the easy way of doing pockets. That's it. You're just sewing down and around, and then I'll bring it back, and I'll show you what it looks like. And there's our inside pocket. Now, if you decide to add a pocket on the other side, so let's say if you're using your own fabric, and you want to add a pocket to the other side, make sure you flip it all the way over and use this as your top and center it the same way. Then that way you can have pockets on both sides of your totes. Now, if you have the pattern, the free pattern from Northcott, you notice how they ask you to sew in the center. So let's take a look at that. So we've got our big pocket. If you love a really, really big, deep pocket, well, then you're done. You're fine. But let's say if you want to carry pencils or other things into your tote bag um, or smaller things, that is actually a really great idea is to sew all the way down and back up again. So I just wanted to show you with and without. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go sew down and up this pocket. Uh, what you want to do is you want to start at the bottom right here in the center. So we're going to take this, fold this over, and finger press. So finger press this. That way we can see where the center is. So I've got my center right there now. I'm gonna start sewing right here at the bottom. I'm gonna go up and down, lock these stitches in, and then move all the way up. When I hit the very top, I'm going to then turn this whole thing around and sew right back down again and lock those stitches in. So it is now in the, in the directions, it says to start at the top. I find that actually starting at the bottom where it's already been secured down here is a better secure way of doing this. Um, so you can also do it from the top as well as the instructions state. Start at the top, secure it, come down, turn around, go back up, and secure it. So I'm going to do the opposite though and come back and show it to you. My pockets are done. Now if you do if yours isn't exactly right if yours isn't exactly lined up with everything um that's perfectly fine this is a project that's probably for you or as a gift from some for someone but better yet you're not going to see this this is going to be on the inside of your tote so this is going to be your pocket so you can go and put things in on the inside so you don't have to worry if they're, these are not as clean as what you like. So next step, I'm going to follow along with the directions. Normally I would wait for the handles after we finish our, our body completely, but the directions from Camelot have us do the handles next. So that's what I'll do next. So we're going to take this and set this aside with the other part of the body. And let's do our, uh, our handles. Now we want to do with these is we want to take these and we want to first off, as you see, I've had mine folded in half, uh, iron them out again, make sure there's no creases in here. Then you want to sew these. So you want to fold these over just like this and you want to sew right along the edge. Do not worry about the openings. You can leave these open, just sew along the edge right here. Now, if please, please, please start and secure your stitches at the very beginning and at the very end. Now, in this case, um, there does honestly doesn't make a difference if you use a quarter inch or a half inch seam. I've measured these these handles. Um, if you do a half inch seam, then the handles themselves are going to be about an inch and a half. Um, if you do a quarter inch, it'll be about an inch and three quarters. Uh, so at this point, you want to iron this, fold both of these over like this, and sew. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam all the way down, securing my ends. And then I'll come back and show it to you. Now we're going to use our favorite tube turning method. You know, it took me three times to say that correctly for a good take. 
So with the tube turning methods, if this is your first tube that you have turned, I do have a video all about the different methods. Uh, you can find it linked down below. Uh, but if you've turned tubes before, you already have a favorite method. My favorite method is using the easy point and turn. It is, it's really, really, really simple. So I'm just going to take this and oops, let me make sure I do that on camera. I'm going to push that over here and there, and then I'm going to hold this and then flip and turn. Sometimes it takes a minute to get it started. But when it does, come on, there it is. Some days are faster than others whenever I get it going. And it has been a bit since I've turned a tube. So then I'm going to grab this side and pull it. And that is it. Now, let's make sure, I, make sure you pull these out all the way whenever you're doing it. Now, I find it's easier to make sure that you don't flip them and tur turn them when you're putting it in your bag if at this point you go ahead and iron it. So what you want to do is lay it down so your seam is down right here and make sure that you uh, pop this out and lay this down just like that. Um, and then you can iron this in place. Now, whenever you have your, um, your handles, you have two options. You can leave it just like this, and in that case, it's just going to kind of be all around. Or if you want a nice, flat, straight surface at all times, at this point is when you put in your stitches. Um, these stitches are optional in these handles. Uh, they just basically run down. So I'm going to grab some gold thread and I'm actually going to put some stitches in mine to show you what it looks like uh, and to have it lay down nicely and not have it move all around. And, and I'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like. So you have the option of doing that for yourself. And there are my handles. So as you see, I just did a, a quarter inch line all the way down here and here. So a quarter inch from the edges. And what this does is it makes this handle keep its shape. So no matter what happens, if I were to wash this, this is not coming undone. This is just a nice handle that's going to sit in my tote bag. All right, so I'm gonna take these and set these aside. Now, we are almost done. Uh, now it's time for the bodies. So what we want to do is we want to take each of these. So here's my inside. I'm going to fold this over and I want to sew this using a half of an inch seam. This is important. Do this using a half inch seam. All right. So we're going to start at the very end here. I'm going to go back and forth and secure this in sewing all the way down here, going back and forth and securing that in. I'm not sewing the bottom. I'm not sewing the top. I'm then turning this around, doing the same thing here. Starting from the bottom, I want to secure it in. Sew a half inch seam all the way up, secure it in. Then I'm going to take this panel here, which is the front, and do the same exact thing. So I'm folding this in half and then securing, sewing that side up, half inch seam, and this side up, half inch seam. So I'm gonna do that with both of these panels, both the outside and the inside, and I will come back and show you what it looks like. And we have our half inch seam. Now that's important. If you're a quilter, you're used to quarter inch seams, this you really want to make sure is a half inch seam that's going to make this stronger and better with your tote. Um, so now we want to iron these seams open just like this side. How you do that, first thing you want to do is trim the corners right there. Now, whenever you trim those corners, make sure you do not trim all the way to that thread. Stop just right before that thread. So trim it just shy of this thread. 
but so make sure you trim this and then that way it's easier to open your seams now the easiest way that i have found that we can open these seams is from doing this we want to open up one side i always like to open it and finger press it to make sure that it's opened and then let's iron it so you want to iron this all the way down against the one side and then after we do that we're going to take this flip this over and fold this back just like it is in fact you know what let's iron this to make sure this is a nice flat area perfect and then we're going to fold this back and iron and what this does now, whenever you open your bag and you open your seam, it is just like that and you've created open seams. Now, a lot of people will open this up just like this and lay this out and then iron it. But I find then as you get towards this edge here, you have some issues and problems um, and then you may want to uh, you iron some things into place. Um, so that's an issue. So that's why I like my method a little bit better when we're ironing seams open. Now, for the next step, you, it's important that you also iron the bottom. So once both of these seams are open, iron a crease into the bottom of your tote. We need that crease for the next step of the boxed corners. So at this point, go ahead and iron all four seams open, not just of the inside bag, but also the outside bag. So make sure the outside and the inside, all four of these get ironed open and we'll come back and I'll show you boxed corners. The box corners are optional. So if you start to do it, if you get confused, um, if it's just a little bit too much, that's fine. You don't need to have the, box, the boxed corners in order to have a good tote bag. However, the reason why you want to have boxed corners is it's going to put a flatter surface on the bottom of your tote bag that it's going to be able to stand. You can put more things in there and it's going to make it stronger and better. So I advise for box corners. However, if they give you a little bit of anxiety, you can skip this part. Um, but I'm going, let me go ahead and just show it to you. Um, it's super, it's actually very easy to do these. So with a box corner, what you need to do is take your tote bag and you want to kind of open it up so you have a pretend there's a whole bunch of air a bunch of clouds and this is why we have our creased bottom we want to kind of pull this and then we want to feel our crease and our and our, our feel our seam and our creased bottom and line them up and i'm just gonna kind of do that and then fold that down and bring this down now when you lay this down like this you want to make sure that your crease and your seam are still lining up the way to check this to make sure that this is done correctly take your straight edge and measure and see so take one of these lines here and put it along here and then a line should follow it up right there. This should then become a perfect 90 degree angle. If it's not a 90 degree angle, redo it. Pull it out, shake it up again, and lay it down again. Um, now, the, if you're following along with the instructions from Camelot Fabrics, it says to draw a four and a half inch line across here. So how you do that, and then I'll show you an easier way, is you actually want to find your one and your four and a half. So I'm actually gonna do my lines right on there. And half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So this should line up here at the two and a quarter. And I'm gonna move this as this lines up here with the four and a half and the one. And then I can draw my seam. Now, something you may have noticed is this is also at the end right here, uh, somewhere between the two and a quarter and two and a half mark. So an easier way that I have found to do it is just take your line, find your two and a half inch mark, line it up on the very bottom of where this has lined up here, 
make sure that this is lined here and then draw your line. So it's a much, much easier way than trying to balance it to make sure it's straight. Just find the two and a half. So let's do that one more time. Now, because I'm putting both of these in, th I may lose this and I don't wanna lose this. So I'm gonna put some pins in here to hold this shape until I sew it. Now, this is your sew line. So you wanna sew along this edge right here. So let's do the other corner. And you're gonna do this to all four corners. So these two corners of this bag, of the inside of the bag, and then the other corners of the outside bag. So both of those. Uh-oh, look what I did. I drew my line, but then I forgot to pin it, so I lost it. And that's why you wanna draw your line, so I'm gonna have to redo that one over again. All right, so let's go ahead and open the seam up and finger press to make sure that this is lined up. The seam with my crease, there we are. And let me fold, let's make sure, that, oh, nope, it's got a little bit wonky. It should be over a little bit, and there. Now, let's check this to make sure that, yes, this is in fact a 90, yep, 90 degree angle. So, I'm going to measure two and a half inches. Now, if you want less of a corner, you can do two inches. If you want more of a corner, you can do three inches. So it all depends upon how big of a base do you want in your bag. Um, the bigger the corners, the bigger the base, but then also the shorter the bag. So keep that in mind so you can make an informed decision to basically change these corners as you like. Now, at this point that we have our corners done, we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew this line. Make sure that you reinforce the beginning, sew to the end, reinforce the end, and we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Now let's trim this a half of an inch seam. So remember, all of the actual assembly of the body is done with a half of an inch. So we're going to measure a half of an inch from the end and then cut. And then at this point, after we're finished trimming both of these, do the same thing that you did with the edges. Let's see, oops, that's a whole inch. Let's go half inch. Do the same thing you did with the body and we're going to take our scissors and we're going to trim these edges here. Let's trim those up. And then we're going to sew, I'm sorry, not sew, I apologize, iron these seams open, just like we ironed this open. So again, trimming this edge here and here on all four corners and ironing open. And then once we do that, then we can finally start assembling our tote bag. All right, so do that, trim and iron open and come back. And there are our corners. So now it's time for assembly. So make sure you have your handles ready. Uh, now, let's think about this logically. Logically, this one is inside out because this is the front, right? So it goes, we wanna be able to see this on the outside. This one is right side because remember, this is gonna be the inside of our bag. So your inside is already at the correct position. In order to assemble this together, we want everything the opposite of what it's going to be so we can do our seams that you don't see, okay? So that means this one is already opposite, so this one is fine. This one, however, we have to turn inside out, which means flipping it this way. So normally, whenever you're sewing things together, you're sewing them right side to right side. Make sure you pop those corners out just like that. So this is now, as you can see, and oh, look at that nice flat bottom because of our boxed corners. This is now inside out because this is supposed to be our lining. So in order to do right side to right side, we're gonna take this one that's inside out 
take our lining that we can see our stuff and we're gonna slip it in. Now at this point, decide where do you want your pockets? Do you want your pockets along the front of your bag or do you want them on the back of the bag? I want my pockets on the back of the bag. So I'm gonna flip this over and then we're just gonna take this whole thing and kind of set it on in there just like that. And then we're going to take our tops. I'm gonna line the tops up. Let's make sure that we've got the seams. So at this point, see this open seam and this open seam? We're going to line this up and let me get my clips. You can put a pin or a clip in here. Just hold that seam just like that. Let's go to the other side and line that seam up. Hold it just like that. And I'm going to clip it. Now I'm going to take the rest of this. I'm just going to kind of shake it out just to make sure everything's going to line up nicely. And it does. And now it's time to put our handles in. All right, so with our handles, um, remember this is all inside out. So our handle is going to actually lay like this inside of the bag with these sticking out just like this. So how we're gonna do this is we're going to make sure, so how do you want your handle to be? Do you want your handle to look like this? Do you want it to look like this? How do you want them? So I think my handles, I want them going the same direction. So I'm gonna lay my handles out just like that. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it just like this, lining this up. And I'm going to open this one side. So don't put them in there, but between both of your layers. So we've got this layer and this layer on the top. And I'm going to put the handle in just like that and spread it. So you wanna place your handles. Let me take a look at the instructions. Uh, it doesn't have any, oh, three inches from the side seams. Fantastic, okay. So let's measure about three inches. One, two, three. Oh, this one's actually pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna lay this one flat and, whoops lay this down in here so i'm laying this flat now this should be sticking up about a half of an inch okay so make sure your actual handle itself the edge of it here is sticking up about a half of an inch and then i'm going to pin this just like that and we're going to do the same thing to the other side now i haven't twisted anything so it's still in there exactly the way that i want it all I have to do is take this and move this. We're gonna measure about three inches. Oh, it's actually three inches right there. About three inches from the side. Let's bring this up and make it nice and flat. Make sure it's sticking out about a half of an inch. And then I'm gonna pin this. Now, when you pin it, make sure you pick this part up to pin it in place or clip it in place because you do not want to accidentally clip or pin this other side because that now it's time to put the other handle in. So we're gonna take this. Remember, I want it exactly like this. It matches the other one. We're rotating this around, opening these two bags up and setting them inside, just like this. So let's go ahead and pull it down. And you know what? I Now because I've done the other side, I can just line this one up along with that one. So I don't have to measure this one. All I have to do is line it up so it's about the same as the other side and then pin it in place. Oops, it went crooked. I don't want it to go crooked. I want it to go straight up and down. There we go, straight up and down, Tony, straight up and down. And pinning in place. And then now comes the fun part of actually sewing the entire thing. So let's do this and whoops, and bring this up and lay it down. Come on, lay down nicely. There we go. And pin this in place. 
and pin this in place. Now it's time for sewing. So how we're going to sew this is we're going to start on one of these ends. It doesn't make a difference which side you start on, if you start on this side or you start on this side. But what you want to do is you want to sew around this entire opening with a half of an inch seam. Please make sure it's a half of an inch seam. And when you hit these areas right here, so as you come here, let's say if I start sewing right here. Oh, and make sure you leave it at, at least a three inch opening. I'm actually going to leave a four inch opening. Um, so if you, to make it easier and to make sure that I sew at least a four inch opening, I'm going to mark on here where my start and my stop is. So here's my start and my stop. So I'm starting here. I'm going to sew this way. Now, as I hit over here, I'm going to sew here. I'm going to go back over again, and then I'm going to go forward again because we want to make sure we reinforce these handles. Then I'm going to sew all the way around to the other side. Keep going. I'm going to go sew here, go back, go forward, keep going, sew forward, back, forward, keep going around all the way here, sew forward, back, forward, and stopping right there. Now, at your starting and your stopping, don't forget to reinforce these. So go forward and back a few stitches to reinforce this area in right here, and then we'll come back and I will show it to you. And there is the sewing. So as you can see, I went forward and back a few stitches at the very ends and along the um, your straps. So I went forward, back, and forward again. Now comes the fun part of flipping this entire thing inside out through this little tiny hole right there. So put your hand in there, and I always like to grab the bottom of it and pull it through. So you can do one of two things, try to pull the whole thing through, or you can pull the, um, the insides out and then flip the outside inside out. So let's just pull this whole thing. There we go. And there, we're gonna keep on going. Oh, look, there's our straps. Keep going, keep going, and almost there. There's the other strap. Now, let's just put that part out, and there it is. So, let's pull that out. Now, the whole thing is done. Now, we just get to take this and put this part inside of this part and shake it out and pull this and do this so shake it out a bit and lay it down now one more thing to do and then our tote bag is done and that is to do a finishing stitch so we're going to do a quick top stitch and what this is going to do is if you um, wash this you don't want this thing to completely come out and lose its shape that you just did so what we want to do is we want to pull all this out I actually am going to take my hand and I'm going to push it in here in order to take these seams and pull each of these seams straight out all the way making sure that it's pulled out and it's going to allow the next step much much easier okay all right, so there we are. Those seams are all good. So now what I wanna do is I want to iron each of these. So I'm gonna pull this right here. Oops, I didn't push these seams out all the way. Sorry, I've just finished pulling the seams out. Okay, I think, I think all of my seams are good now. Yes, all right, so everything's pulled all the way out. So what we wanna do is we want to iron all of this here, so I'm going to go around my bag, iron completely all the way around, and then make sure when you're ironing this hole right here, make sure you're ironing that closed right there. Then I'm going to put my gold thread back in there, because you can still see gold, but it'll finish it off nicely. I'll put my gold thread back in my machine, and then I'm going to do a quick top stitch. So I'm going to sew 
all the way around here. Now, if you're following the instructions, it says to whip stitch this right here. You do that with a needle and thread by hand. You, if you top stitch this, you don't have to do that part. Um, so just do a quick top stitch all the way around. And you don't need to reinforce these unless you want to. You can just do a single stitch there because you've already reinforced it on the inside. So I'm going to iron this, I'm going to top stitch this, come back and show you what the top stitching looks like. And there's my top stitching. So as you see, a top stitch is only that far away from the edge. You do not have to go very far from the edge. And as you can see, mine's a little wonky in some places. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. No one is gonna see it because when you put that down, can you see that top stitching? No! No one's gonna notice that top stitching, which is perfectly fine. And then again, you just go and you just do it the entire way around. Now, let's take a look at the tote. So, we have our boxed corners that allow for the tote to stand up. Look at that. Just like that, it's standing up on its own. And that's because of those boxed corners. I have my pockets in here. If you have pockets on both sides, then you've got pockets there and there. Um, now, you could have also put additional pockets, remember here, so we gave you those options. Uh, but there is my tote bag, all ready for books. Now you notice with this tote bag, I have here and here, and so it's open like this. If you decide for the future that you want to make your, um, your actual handles here to here, just make those changes whenever you slip it in. Remember, this edge right here is not sewn to this edge right there. You can totally cross your handles. So now that you know how to put your handles inside a tote, you can put your handles any which way you like. Um, and there is your, your tote bag ready to go. And we have a tote bag. It is a super cute, functional tote bag with some pockets in there if you decided to put pockets in. Now remember, you can change the handles another way. You can switch your pockets. It is your tote bag. You can do anything you like. Um, thank you so much to Camelot for having a fantastic pattern um, and a really cute panel that we can do with it. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned how to make a tote bag uh, don't forget to like this video, follow my YouTube, as well as Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, where I can stream live, uh, Pinterest. Oh, and don't forget about my Quite Nerdy Quilters Facebook group. Uh, thank you so much again, and I will, uh, catch you later, maybe online.